plugins are one of the best and worst things in the whole WordPress ecosystem. They can increase the developer's workflow and decrease it to the lowest possible level. And they can make us happy and cry. So should we use them? If so, how to decide which plugins should we use? Let's assume that you are building a house where you want to spend the rest of your life. In this case, you want to have ability to choose solutions that uh, match your exact expectations and your needs. You want to choose solutions that uh, makes you independent. You probably don't want to change the whole layout of your kitchen, which is the core, uh, because, of, because the fridge X, which is implementation detail, doesn't fit there. You will be just trying to find another fridge that will fit there. Of course, sometimes you will have to find compromise, but mostly you will want to do it in your style. And that's a great example of clean architecture of your life. You are in the center. You, your needs. And the same approach should be used when you build applications that solve some business problems. Your problems, your needs and your requirements should be at the center, with the highest possible independency level. Plugins are just implementation details, so probably you don't want to change your business needs, business requirements to fit something that pro plugin provides. If your business is in the center, you should build solutions around your business, but not around plugins that you use. Let's say that you are building the hotel reservation system for your client. The client's business needs are super simple for now. Uh, guests should be able to reserve the hotel room and select the number of people in their party. You decide to use the free plugin that provides this basic functionality as a core. However, as your client's business grows, you start to realize that you need to offer much more customized features in your application, such as different prices for adults and children and um, restricting backings on holiday season in, on certain weekends. Unfortunately, the plugin that you decide to use doesn't have such functionality, so um, implementing those features without altering the plugin's core files is almost impossible. So you just have a problem here. As a result, you start adding more and more features on the top of the plugin to fit your client's business needs. So after a short time, you've become too reliant on this plugin. Let's assume that the authors decide to uh, switch to paid license, uh, which costs $1,000 per week. Since your system is heavily dependent on the plugin, you have no choice but to pay fee, you or your client. The worst case scenario happens when the author abandons the plugin, uh, which leaves your business without updates. This example highlights the biggest problem that I have when using plugins. You are dependent on someone else's work and decisions. The decisions that can harm your business. If the plugin's author implements faulty changes, your business might be in danger. If the plugin authors will implement security leak, mm, your business might be impacted as well. In other words, business needs should be in the center of your development strategy, not the plugins. By building a system around your business requirements, you gain more control over the outcome and you ensure that you are not dependent on anyone else's decisions. Business should be in the center and your software just should reflect that. Using plugins in your project can be a tempting shortcut but it is important to understand the risk it entails when the system grows. While those can add useful features and save development time, then they can also make the whole system difficult in modification. Uh, they can also gen generate more unexpected problems over time. Of course, it's unlikely that you can completely avoid external dependencies, but I think that we should do as much as possible to uh, reduce the system reliance on any of them. In my experience, I've seen many projects that was that were uh, heavily dependent on the plugins and uh, the modification and implementing new features was super demanding. You might think that using popular plugins won't harm your business. And I totally understand that because I used to believe the same until I experienced many issues, even in the simple task that they should do. So here are the list of three um, arguments why I decide to avoid plugins as much as possible. The first one, 
database optimization. Most of the plugins works well when the system is small, when the database is small, but when it grows, grows uh, the plugins are unusable even in the simplest tasks. For example, Yoast and uh, the sitemap generation. The second one, user first, developer second approach. Most of the plugins are overloaded with functions that you probably won't use in your development workflow. Uh, with, they are overloaded with features that look instead of work well. For example, Ninja Forms is a great example here. And the third one, front-end optimizations. Many plugins loads tons of JavaScript and CSS files just for providing super simple things. To reduce those problems, it is important to prioritize business rules by creating the most crucial parts of your system as custom solutions to match your exact needs and exact ex expectations. It is important to use plugins like a tools instead of treating them as foundation of your solution. You can design the system in a way that will allow to easily switch problematic plugin to someone something else without touching your business requirements. I don't want to say don't use plugins at all because I just don't mean that. You can use as many plugins as you need because that's your choice. But please, always try to weight up the benefits of using them uh, with the risk that they can have. Always try to think about their impact on your project. So, how to decide uh, which plugins and when use plugins in the application? I've created the five rules that helps me with this. Number one, focus on your business. Try to build solutions around your business rules rather than uh, around plugins. If the booking is the most crucial part for your business success, try to put more money and effort and build solutions from scratch to match your exact expectations. It will be easier to modify and implement new features when the, your business grows. If you need to modify and hack plugins behavior to match your requirements, you can be sure that it will become even worse in the next stages and when the business will grow. The second one, avoid plugins as default choice approach. Try to implement some solutions yourself, especially when those are super simple. It ensures that the code does only things that are really needed and that's super useful when the things don't go as planned. There is no need to install plugin for adding GTM if you can do it yourself even simpler in the code. The third one, have, have a clear and logic reason for using plugins. It is okay to use plugins when you build MVP project because the time is more, more, much more important than the code quality. It is also okay to use plugins that you really, really trust. But if you install the plugins without checking and without putting any effort to check if you can do it yourself, so the reason is laziness, that's wrong. Number four, be responsible for your decisions. If you decide and recommend to use plugins X for implementing business features for your clients, you are the one who is responsible for this, no matter that someone else has created this plugin. You can't clear yourself in case of any problems blaming mainly plugin X because the clients it no interested in this because you was the one who decided to use this. And number five, use plugins as tools. If you need to use plugins, try to use them in a way that will allow easily switching them in case of any problems. Try to use solid principles as your weapon, because believe me, it really helps when things don't go as planned. Adopting to the new approach may be overwhelming, especially in the beginning when the cost may seem to be excessive. That's because many things need to be created from scratch, which result in higher price point. Moreover, WordPress market is filled with cheap alternatives that implies using plugins and poor architecture. So you might have a feeling that you won't be able to get interesting clients using this approach. But based on my experience, just try. Create your own workflow. Use keys principle, collect your idea snippets, build your components library and make them better and easier over time. 
After a few projects you will have nice looking building blocks that you will be able to use to build highly scalable and plugin free architecture. So as a result of switching to this workflow you get the following items. Your business rules are secured and are not dependent on external factors. The second one, you are not responsible for someone else's work. The third one, your system is prepared to change. And the last one, you can sleep better. Building projects without being dependent on many external plugins was a game changer for me. It's improved the development process and it speed up this process. Uh, as well, it improved the sense of responsibility in me and my team. It helped us to gain more trust from the clients because they appreciate this approach. Don't get me wrong, the plugins have their place, but minimizing their usage and being mindful of their, their impact can make all the difference in building big and highly scalable WordPress projects. Okay, that's all from my side in this topic. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give thumbs up. And if you are interested in more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. It will really help me. So thank you for today and see you next time. Bye bye.